Let's talk about the sexiest, sexiest position group in the NFL draft. Uh, it's the offensive interior. Yeah, I love people just love them. Offensive interior. Guards, centers. Oh gosh. Oh. Tell me more. I know. I know. But this is actually one of the deeper classes in this draft class in the 2021 draft class this is a really good class especially at the top but before we get into that if you didn't know uh i'm steven lagardell better known as what's crack lacking it's your boy broshmo just in case you did not know so go ahead become a bro and subscribe leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content i'm gonna give you my top 10 offensive interior prospects and then keep in mind if you want to see my expanded rankings i got 10 more guys on this list then go to fan to fan network you can follow the link in the description below or in the pinned comment. But like I said, this is a very good class. Let's go ahead. Let's get in with the top Wyatt Davis at Ohio State. I think currently he's the only first rounder. Uh, there's probably two guys that I think really flirt with being potential first rounders. But I think Davis for me is the for sure one. I kind of comp him to Quinn and Nelson. He was just utterly dominant in 2019. But keep in mind, this was his only year of starting experience. Um, but I don't think this guy's a one-year wonder by any means. He was a solid run blocker, and he was one of the best uh, pass protectors. He didn't allow a hit on the quarterback for over 400 pass blocking snaps. His technique's very polished. He's very strong to boot. Like I said, this guy, he gives me Quinn and Nelson vibes. Unfortunately, them not being able to play this year, or at least currently, the Big Ten's not scheduled to play this year. Uh, I think this kind of like leaves the door open for him potentially going late first round or even falling out of the first round. But in my book, he's the only guy I currently have projected from this interior class in the first round. And then close second, Trey Smith out of Tennessee. The, honestly, the, this guy's played all almost all along the line for Tennessee. He started out at um, guard, at right guard, I believe. His freshman season, they moved him to uh, left tackle and then right tackle during his sophomore campaign. And then last year, they put him at left guard, which was fabulous. It was a great idea. Good on them because he was one of the best guards in all of college football. He plays with tremendous strength. He's got very good athleticism for being 335. And you kind of like the versatility of oh he could play tackle a little bit i'd still stick with him at guard all right i don't he's a bit heavy footed uh he could probably use a little more polish on his pass reps but i think at guard he sticks just well but of course there is the medical red flag of the blood clots in his lungs where he kind of he kind of suffered that his sophomore and junior year so hopefully everything checks out well for him at the combine but this guy very good, very good. And then at three, I got Alicia Vera Tucker out of USC. One of the best pass blocking um, prospects in this interior class. He only allowed a pressure rate of 1.1%. This guy, he just, some some scouts kind of want to knock on his athleticism. I think he's very, very athletic. I think, I mean, so much so that if the Pac-12 would have a season, USC planned to move him to left tackle for the year. So the guy, I think he's got, in my opinion, he's got the athleticism. And if y'all y'all ain't new to the channel, you know I'm a sucker for athleticism. I love athleticism. And benefit of the doubt, offensive interior, that's probably the one position you could get away with not being athletic. The one position on the field you get to get away with, uh, with it. Um, he could play a little. I wish he could play a little stronger. You kind of notice that on the run game. But he does have a great comp. He, it's not he's not weak by any means, like, and you could see that as a pass blocker. The guy's very strong, so he's got a good combination of athleticism and um, power. What I think it is is really his hand placement, and I think that could go a long way in the run game for him. But he's going to be declaring. They won't have a season. Hopefully, that's something he works on uh, in this in between time. And then at four, I got Tyler Linderbaum out of Iowa. I don't even think he's. I think. This guy was going to return and end up coming out in the 2022 draft. At least I would put money on it. I'm pretty confident. But he is a bit undersized if, we, if we're talking about it. Like, he, he is only 288. But I think he get it up to that 300. But he's the most athletic lineman in this class. He has great hands. He's very 
a very sound technician. Uh, he does have a background in wrestling, which it's like, okay, kind of makes sense that he's very good with his hands. Um, but again, with multiple years of eligibility and potentially no season this year for him, I definitely could see him coming out in 2022 and being a, maybe a potential first round pick. And then at five, I got Creed Humphrey from Oklahoma. And yes, let the hate come. I got a third round grade on this guy. And I I know a lot of people are going to be like, this guy's a first rounder. A lot of people haven't pegged as first rounder. For me, I can't see it right now simply because I think he is a guard. Just because of his height, he often gets out leveraged. Like he doesn't lose often, but when he does, it's like he'll go a whole game just losing snap after snap after snap you saw that against um alabama um in 2018 quinn williams just wreaked havoc on him and then last year against baylor uh bravery on roy they just overpowered him because he has trouble uh getting out of his stance and getting good leverage and like by no means is he a bad player i think a move to guard because he's again like another guy with a wrestling background he's got strong powerful hands he's actually He's a decent athlete, and I think a move to guard would actually do him worlds of worlds of wonder. And why I have him in the third is because he's never played guard. That's the thing. He has taken like over like a thousand some snaps from center. That's the only position he knows. So with me thinking he translates better to a guard, but not having played the guard position, I feel better about potentially taking him in the third round than I would around earlier. So I love the prospect, but the inexperience at guard and me wanting him to play him at guard has me put a third round grade on him. And then at six, Ben Cleveland from Georgia. This guy is a freak in terms of strength. Um, this, honestly, many scouts think he has the opportunity to break the bench press uh, record at the combine. He's got a very similar vibe to like Damian Lewis. Um, especially in that Georgia offense that loves to run the football. But uh, Damian Lewis, he went in the third round, so I got a third round grade on Cleveland. Uh, he, the only thing with him, I think he handles agility a lot better than Damian Lewis. That was kind of the knock on the LSU offensive line is they sucked at handling speed and um, just quicker pass rushers. And I think pass rushers or even interior rushers but uh i i I think this guy he's just fine the only problem is he hasn't seen over 500 snaps in a season at all whether it's um injuries or off the field um like academic ish inability like uh ineligibility he's just hasn't been able over the course of the last three seasons been able to stay on the field the most snaps he played in a season was 475 so if we could see him play a full season, play like six to 700 plus snaps, then I'm more than willing to probably keep him as a late day two. But if not, then I'd probably move him back a little bit. Then at 70, or at 70, wow, at seven, I got James Empey out of BYU. That BYU offensive line is a banger and he is the best prospect on there, mark my words. I don't know why he's not getting the attention he deserves because he has been utterly dominant, especially in terms of true pass sets over the last two seasons. Only Cesar Ruiz ranked ahead of him in terms of interior linemen. He had the third highest run blocking grade over that stretch for an interior. The guy, he's definitely, definitely someone to keep your eye on. He's only allowed 17 pressures and two sacks over the course of over 1,800 snaps. He gets to play versus the ACC this year. So expect this guy to rise up boards. That's why I got him in the third. And then at eight, Josh Myers out of Ohio State. He was kind of a bit overshadowed last year by Jonah Jackson and Wyatt Davis, who I got number one on here. But he's very good in his own right. He's got very nimble feet, being a former tackle. So he's got some solid athleticism. But you don't really see any dominant reps on tape from him. He just kind of holds his ground. Um, I think probably see him moving to guard because he there are times where he does struggle at center he allowed four sacks last year and i think it again like same thing i talked about with uh creed humphrey uh, times where he would just get out leveraged so i th- i like him better move into the guard position and then at nine sidarius 
Hutcherson out of South Carolina. I love this guy. And I swear, freaking South Carolina pulls what they did last year with him. I'm going to be pissed because it's going to hurt his draft stock. They had him play left tackle last year. He is not a left tackle by any means. He's not a tackle by any means. He is a guard. He's got a great combination of just size and power. No one, you will not overpower this guy. It, it, I think. The thing with like big knock on him last season, and I even had a seventh round grade on him last year, just because he played him at tackle. He doesn't have the quick feet for tackle. I think they're quick enough to play at the guard position. I think he has a high he's a high floor type of prospect who can be an immediate starter, plug and play. Like I said, the dude's ridiculously strong and one of my favorite guys in this class. And then at 10, I got Jack Anderson out of Texas Tech. He's a guy actually I'm very high on. Or at least I was last year. I had him as like um, a sleeper to come into the first round. And then he missed eight games with an injury. So uh, you win some, you lose some, right? But I think he's got great upside. He really shows off. A lot of people don't really talk about. They talk about his strength, but not his athleticism. I think he's very athletic. He's very quick to get into the second level and laying blocks out. And you have to be quick in that air raid offense. So... The guy is very good. Like I said, the dude, we everyone knows about his power. The dude's stupid strong. And I think it is another guy that could really rise his stock with a healthy season. There, granted, it's against the Big 12, where you probably where they typically you only see three uh three rushers on um on the defensive line. So you're you, it's not like you're getting a lot of pressure there. So Big 12, there, there's a bit of a knock there just playing in the Big 12 for an offensive lineman. You're not really challenged, but I love the athleticism. I love the power. It's a guy, this is a guy I expect to rise up board. But that's it for my list. Go ahead, look at my expanded rankings on fan to fan Network. You can follow the link in the description below or in the pinned comment. I got 10 more guys on that list, so go check it out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And of course, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.